What Relearn Servo Settings does is this, the um, 637T is really unique in that the transmitter is communicating information about its internal settings to the receiver itself. It's also really important to understand, while most people are making changes to the transmitter and they get the impression that the programming is actually being stored in the transmitter, it's really not. The programming for the 637T is being stored in the 637T. So when you first bound and set up the 637T, um, and then you were told that, hey, you needed to set up the servo reversing and the travel adjust and the dual rate and the wing types and so on. So all of that is actually, information is being stored here in the 637T. Now, if for some reason you need to go in and change anything, like let's say, heaven forbid, you need to change wing type. I don't know why you do that at this point, but if you do, if you change servo reversing, if you change you know, dual rate setup, travel adjust and so on, you need to go in and hit relearn servo settings. What this does is this calibrates the settings in the transmitter with the functionality that you're gonna be using with the 637T. In one of the previous videos, we were recently talking about how priority works and how hitting hold works around center, priority works at full travel and so on. If you don't do that, those items won't coincide accurately. So if you have 100% priority, it really won't happen right at the edge. Of, uh, of stick travel. So it's really important anytime you go in and you make basic settings to things like um, servo travel adjust, servo reversing especially, wing type and so on, you need to go in and relearn servo settings. It's very easy to do. So I'm gonna go in here, hit relearn servo settings, and this assumes, hey, I've already, you know, for whatever reason, maybe I put a new servo in and that servo is reverse servo or whatever. And so I already reversed that in my servo setup mode. So I go here, hit apply. And now that new configuration is being sent to the receiver. It doesn't change anything else. It doesn't change your gains. It simply changes those base settings that were in your transmitter. So that's what relearn servo settings is about. And it's very important that you do that. Extremely important that you do that Otherwise, you can have some catastrophic things happen. Like I said, if you change wing type or if you, uh, you, know, if you hit a reverse um, channel and you know, be, it would be the opposite direction would occur uh, for the correction. And so that's what relearn servo settings is all about. Then gain channel select. So again, go back to this screen. You can get there from forward programming through the uh, gyro settings and select gain channel select. Okay, here you're gonna notice that you have independent roll, pitch, and yaw channels. So previously, we had the knob set up so that it was auxiliary three, and when we went in, you know, previously in the basic setup, we assigned the gain channel to the auxiliary three channel, which was on the knob. And of course, that's gonna show up as auxiliary three. Now, here's something kind of neat that we can do. Let's say, for example, I want my roll gain to be here and I want my, um, you know, my pitch gain to be on auxiliary four, and I have auxiliary four programmed to a slider, and then let's say I wanna have my yaw gain set to someplace else. I could put it on a trimmer or wherever, and that happens to be on auxiliary five, for example. So I can set all that up, and then I can independently adjust in flight, um, per flight mode, each of these, um, each of these, you know, knobs. So this is going to be aileron, this is going to be elevator, and this is going to be yaw. So I go up and fly. I make the adjustments independently, and then I can come back and I can capture the settings. In order to assign the sliders or trim switches and so on to a particular channel, let me show you how to do that. So you're going to go in the basic radio settings. So I'm going to go back to the menu. I'm going to go to model setup. I'm gonna to go to channel assign, proceed, long press, and say for example, auxiliary five. Um, so the switch for auxiliary five, I wanna put that on the left slider. I can simply move the left slider and now that's assigned to auxiliary five. So I go to whatever auxiliary channel that I choose um, you know, let's say auxiliary four, I want to put that on the right slider so I can adjust that. 
Same thing with the knob. I can also put it on trimmers. So that's how, how, where I'm able to assign channels to the particular um, uh, switches or sliders or knob. Um, and by doing that, then it allows me to assign those um, specific roll, pitch, and yaw gains to whatever I choose to on the radio. So also it's important to keep in mind that with uh, this, you know, this function is, is ideal for upper channel count radios. You know, if you're using too many channels or functions um, that don't allow you to independently assign a channel to each of those, then, you know, unfortunately that's limiting. So for example, if you have a six channel radio, uh, eight channel radio, you know, you're using multiple um, ailerons and so on, you may run out of channels. So the, um, the function that we're talking about assumes that you have enough channels to be able to independently make those adjustments. So that's what, uh, that's what gain channel select is about. It allows you to independently, or you can put them all together um, on, on a particular knob or trimmer, and it allows you to independently adjust those axis in flight.